In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can turn a simple 2D type texture like you see here into a more realistic looking 3D texture that actually has geometry to it. In the I can zoom in here and you can actually see that the bricks are extruded. And the mortar is recessed. I'll show you how to go about doing that and use by using the displacement modifier. All right. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to just go ahead and delete this um, plane, that image, because we're going to start from scratch. And just to let you know, I'm going to be using GIMP to create my displacement map. Because whenever you create this, you're going to have two parts. You're going to have your image, which is all your color parts, and then you're going to have a displacement map, which tells uh, Blender where what parts to extrude and what parts to recess. And I'm going to use GIMP to create the displacement map. GIMP is uh, a freeware, so you can don't cost anything to download it. You're, most people are probably already familiar with it. And this is where you download it. GIMP.org. I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to find a good wall texture. I'm just I'm going to search brick wall texture. Click on images and I'm going to go ahead and change this so that I'm looking at large ones and set the minimum to 4 megapixels. That way we're guaranteed to look at a large image. Now there's a couple of things you need to look out for whenever you are trying to find an image to create to use as a texture, especially if you're going to be using a displacement map. You want the image to be evenly lit. Basically you don't want it to be have any shadows on it. You don't want it to be darker in the corners. You want the light to be spread over it evenly. And this one, this image right here fits that criteria. So I'm going to go ahead and download that image and then use that one as an example. I'm going to save this. I'm going to call this uh, brick wall color. Now, hopefully you already have GIMP installed on your computer. If not, this will probably be a good time to go download it and install it. All right. I got GIMP opened up here, so I'm going to open up that image that I just downloaded. Here it is, brick wall color. Click open. Now, we want to make the color on this more simplified and how we go about doing that first thing we want to do is go to colors and then go to desaturate and basically all that's doing is turning it into a grayscale choose average and then click OK now go back up to colors and then go to threshold now threshold basically what it's doing is turning it into a one bit image it's just black pixels and white pixels and we want to adjust this slider right here until all the recessed areas are one color and are the and all the uh, extruded areas are another color Basically, in this case, all the recessed areas or the mortar will be black and the bricks will be white. We want to find, slide this until, until you reach that point, but not so far like to that point where the mortar starts turning white. It doesn't have to be perfect, just close. And that's about right, about that point. Now that right there will be our displacement map go up here to file export as and then just change color to displacement that way we know what it is
then finish exporting it. Now we can close Blender because we don't, not Blender, pardon me, we can close GIMP because we don't need it anymore. Now what we want to do is uh, go ahead and add our wall. I'm going to go to solid view so we can see what we're doing. And uh, down here, go to add, mesh, and since the wall is basically just a plane, go to images as planes. And if you don't have images as planes here, you can go up here to file, use the preferences, and then go to add-ons. And then if you type in images into the search box, then images as planes will show up and just click the check mark right there to, to add that feature. But now go to add mesh images as planes and then choose your brick wall, which that's the, the color version and then import that in. I'm going to go ahead and scale this up alright now what we want to do we want to before we can add the displacement modifier before it will work we need to subdivide this plane and we need to add a huge number of, of, of subdivisions so what we want to do, we want to go into edit mode by pressing tab on the keyboard, then go to subdivide, and then the, the largest number you can put in right here is 100. We're going to go ahead and put in 100. And don't worry, because if you look up here, all of a sudden you have uh, 20,000 faces, or pardon me, 10,000 faces, because we're going to get rid of the ones we don't need. We actually still need more subdivisions. So go ahead and click out of uh, edit mode by pressing tab and then press tab one more time to go back into edit mode and then press subdivide once again. Now it's subdivided by one so now you have 200 subdivisions or 40,000 faces. Now go ahead and press tab again to exit edit mode. Now 40,000 faces is a huge amount especially for one object. But don't worry because we're going to be getting rid of a lot of the faces that we don't need later on. But we need that much geometry in order to get the displacement modifier to work. But again, we will be getting rid of the faces that we don't need. Now what, you want, what we want to do, see if we go right here to rendered, we have that same, you know, flat texture. But we don't we don't want it so we gotta let's add the displacement modifier so go up here to the modifiers tab add modifier and then go to displace and then change it from texture coordinates to UV and then click new and leave everything else the same for now now we need to add our displacement texture now click on texture and then make sure this right here is on displace if it's not choose displace now open up the image that we just made with GIMP which is this one right here brick wall displacement And now we can go back to the displacement modifier, and all we see is black. And the reason why, let me zoom out. And that's because it's so extruded that it's actually covering up the lamp, that the lamp's inside of it. And that's because we have the strength all the way up. So let's turn the strength way down. Let's turn it down to 0.1. Now we can zoom now we can zoom back in and see that's that's not too bad but it's still the re, it's the mortar is too recessed so we need to turn that down some more go to 0 0.05 looks still a little bit too recessed go down to 0 0.03 and that looks 
That looks better. But as you can see, it's still very recessed. Let's go down 0 0.01. There we go. That's, that's looking better. But look how rough the edges are. And it's just kind of jagged looking. The best way to go about cleaning that up is to add another modifier. Click on Add Modifier. Go to Smooth. And I generally put this on 1. And then if I turn this up to about 5, it generally works pretty good. Now what we want to do at this point is use another modifier to get rid of some of these faces because that amount of faces will eat up memory especially if you have multiple objects that have uh, a displacement modifier attached to it but before we do that I'm going to extrude this just a little bit more by going back up here to the displacement modifier and changing that to 0 0.02 there we go it looks a little bit better now let's uh, get rid of some of those faces click on add modifier and then go down here to decimate and then click on planar and then what this is doing just by adding that and changing it to planar we went from 40,000 faces down to 8,700 faces and what that's doing you have this angle limit right here and basically faces that don't diverge from each other more than five degrees according to how this is set this is set at five degrees faces that don't that aren't at an angle of more than five degrees from each other it will not it it will decimate them into one mesh or into one face if that makes any sense and you can turn this up to 10 and there eventually you reach a point where it doesn't do any good or it starts causing a little bit of uh, issues like right here so probably on this one probably about seven or eight is about right and now if we go down here to solid we can see it see the the uh, 3d or the texture the physical texture the the displacement much better now if we click click on smooth shading it gets rid of some of the blockiness now we want to go ahead and apply these meshes once we have it the way we want it which in my opinion this is close enough start at the top just press apply apply and apply so you went from 40,000 faces down to 6,000 faces and whenever you look at it rendered you got a fairly decent 3d texture let me uh, add a little bit of light to the world so we can see a little bit better so that's not bad but I guess that's it if you have any questions whatsoever oh I, I forgot I want to show you what the decimate actually does I'm gonna go ahead and change this back to solid and uh, I'm gonna pr press tab to go into edit mode and now we can see what the decimate modifier actually done if you look right here into the valleys and so forth there's a lot more geometry like right in here right in here there's a lot more geometry but on the flat areas like the flat parts of the bricks there's it's just one big face that's how it done away that's how it went from 40,000 faces down to uh, 6,200 faces is by doing that but that's essentially what the decimate modifier does but anyway if you have any questions about how to use this 
or if I didn't explain myself very well because I often don't don't hesitate to leave a comment in uh, this video the links to um, GIMP will be in the in the description of this video I always reply to comments I don't think there is one comment on my entire channel that I do that I have not replied to but anyway thanks for watching and keep on blending people later